Hey guys, welcome to another R package review. The goal of these reviews is to make you more effective data scientists and save your time. And as you know, data scientists spend up to 80% of their time cleaning and preparing data for a fancy analysis. So in this video, we'll be dealing with the Genitor package which allows you to be more productive quicker. Today we'll use three main packages. Tidyverse for data manipulation, Genitor for data cleaning, that's what this video is all about, and read Excel package just for importing the data. And of course, in order to use these packages, you have to install them first. The world is full of dirty data, but if somehow you don't have any of these, you can go to the GitHub page of the Genitor package and download a table with dirty data from there. That's what I've done. You put this table into the directory of your choice and have a look at it. The first thing I have to deal with are the names of the table, and they are sometimes really peculiar. So they are often very long, they consist of several words, strange signs, and sometimes even brackets with descriptions of the categories. And in the Excel it might look very beautiful, but it's really, really horrible to work with. So the first thing I always have to do with the data is to clean these names, mostly by renaming them. But imagine you have thousands of columns. Luckily, Genitor package provides a solution for this, and the solution is hidden in the function clean names. It's one of the most useful functions from this package. So if we take the dirty data, then, and that's what this pipe operator means, clean their names simply by writing the function clean names and save it in the new dataset D, we will clean all these names. First of all, we have only words. Secondly, we have one word for one column. And finally, identical columns will be automatically renamed so you can differentiate them. The second most annoying thing in data cleaning procedure are empty columns and empty rows. And the thing we want to do with this is just to remove this empty stuff. Well, again, Genitor package provides a solution for it, and the function to remove the empty stuff is called remove empty. It could be simpler than that. So if we have a look at data after removing some empty stuff, we will see no empty row and no empty columns. So since our dataset got a bit cleaner, let's update it a bit. Another problem I often encounter are constant columns. For example, if people produce some new columns and then work with the data and remove part of it, some columns may remain the same. And since they have no value for us, but make the data more complex and more dirty, we can remove constant columns by using remove constant from Genitor package. And if we run this code, we see that all the constant columns are being removed. Another annoying problem in data science are duplicates. And in order to find duplicates in a particular column and then remove them if we need, or just have a look at them, Ginter package provides a function getDupes. So if we run this code, we will see that in the column first name, we have two names which are duplicated. Working with scores may be very challenging. For example, I now have to work with hundreds of thousands of animals, which are all scored from 1 to 5. And sometimes this score has to be in quarterly order. For example, 1.25, 1.5, 1.75, etc. But some estimates do not look like they should. For example, this one is supposed to be 0.75 instead of 0.8. This can happen if one animal was measured several times and some people just average their scores. Or if some colleagues want to be more exact and smarter and stupidly produce this estimate which we don't want. Round to fraction function from Ginter package resolves this problem. For example, we can say that our denominator is 4 and that's why every score will be represented in quarters. So if we run this code, please have a look at this area of the result. It was changed and that's what we wanted. It can be useful if you have hundreds of thousands of animals in one column and you really 
don't want to write a load of code to change it. Working with scales is complicated, but what is really painful is working with dates, especially if you import data from Excel. So if you import the data from this column, you see the Excel date encoding system, which does not make any sense. Fortunately, convert to date from the Jenitor package can solve this problem. If we run this code, we will get the dates from this encoded. There is a special R package Lubridate to work with dates in R and it has covered everything you want, so it is very powerful. But sometimes I need a quick and dirty solution in order to continue working without interruptions. Another problem I encounter often if I work with very organized people are several headers in the table. For example, they write something general in the first row and then they have a real title of the column below it. So they always have some summarizing information which is very important for them, but the real name which I want and which statistical models use are actually below in the for example, second row. So we can use the row to names function from this package to deal with this. So we already saw a lot of examples how to clean the data, but this package can also summarize the data in beautiful or adorable frequency tables with one, two or three categories or variables. And there is an old way to produce the frequency table, which I use several years. You are probably familiar with the table function. So if we run this, we will get our frequency table. But the problem with this is that I always have to write this part of the code if I want to see if this column contains any NAs or not available uh, observations. Another problem here is if I don't need counts but percentages, I have to wrap up the table function inside of the prop table function, which means percentages. And voila, well, we get our percentages, which are oddly rounded. The tabular function from Genita package gives you both immediately the counts and the percentages. Now we can have a look at the tabular function working with two variables. So it calculates all the counts and produces a beautiful frequency table. Let's make a small table for it full time. And we see that it can also calculate all the totals, the totals of columns and rows. If we don't do this and only use the other total function, it will produce only totals of the columns by default. Interestingly, you can see that if we use two variables instead of one, the percentages are gone, but we still want them. So we can use the adorn percentage function to get the percentages again. If we run this part of the code, we will get our percentages. For example, here we have 33%. But usually I spend a lot of time rounding these numbers, then putting the percentage sign violently into this number by the paste command or paste zero command from R. And this all problems were solved by this single function, adorn percentages formatting, because that's what we do. We format it. If we run this code then, we get actually what we want. The number of percentages in a human-friendly representation and the percentage sign, even rounded to one decimal place. But sometimes we even want numbers near the percentages. And there is another function under numbers. So if we run all three of them under percentages, we format these percentages and other numbers, we will finish up with a pretty beautiful table. Sometimes we want these uh, numbers to be uh, before percentages, and that's why we can use the argument position front. So running this code would give us this kind of table with the numbers in front of the percentages. We can, of course, add title to our table so that we know exactly which categories came from which column, because sometimes you have categories which are identical in both columns. For example, if you compare two medical tests, both of these will be having positive and negative results.
Here we produce totals for rows, which means that every row has 100% in it. We could do the same with the columns, where every column would contain 100% in it. But sometimes we want the frequency table to have all the categories measured in percentages independently of row and column. So for this, we can use Adorn percentages function with argument all, and this would produce the frequency table where all the observations inside of the table independently of row or column will be calculated and the percentages for them. The last function I'd like to present here is the compare data frame columns function, which allows you to compare two tables because we all produce new tables now and then and we want to compare whether the tables are different or what was changed. So for this, I produce a new data frame, D1, and just compare them. Here we can see that D1 has two new columns, which I just produced, and D has not. So I hope you can appreciate that every single function from Genita package makes your life easier and more productive. Some of them a lot easier. For example, I use clean names and remove empty every day. But the real power of this package accumulates over time because you free your mind and time for creative work instead of solving problems. I'm curious what is your favorite R package. Please let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video and want to see more, please consider to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.